Thank you. Greetings. I thank God for the opportunity of being with you here. I thank God for bringing all of you from different parts around the world from 92 countries. And we are excited for what God is doing. We are especially thankful to our Indonesian Evangelical Alliance uh, host together with Pastor Nico Nyotoro Harjo for their exceptional generosity in hosting our General Assembly. Do we say amen to that? Well, as Secretary General of the World Evangelical Alliance, I often think of the Apostle Paul of his ministry as recorded in the New Testament. Paul traveled throughout the Christian world of his day, enduring great hardships to encourage the believers. Paul knew that his efforts would be in vain if the local churches will not prosper. He referred to the churches as his joy and crown. He prayed earnestly for them. He felt deep daily emotional burden for the churches. And he was especially concerned that the church will function together in unity. This is seen in 1 Corinthians as well as in Ephesians and in his personal appeals like to the two women who were squabbling, Judea and Syntyche, and he was asking that they be together. The World Evangelical, the World Evangelical Alliance today is in many ways like that of Paul. We'll travel all over the world seeking support to support, unite, and empower believers just as Paul depended the governors before the Roman Empire. I think we need to... Okay, next slide. Uh, we travel all over the world seeking the support to unite and empower believers just as Paul defended the gospel before governors uh, just like us as World Evangelical Alliance. We try to defend and as well as speak for the believers to the governments as well as at the United Nations. So, we pray that the church around the world, you know, we pray for the church around the world and we feel a great burden in relation to those churches that uh, remain faithful under dangerous circumstances. Just as Paul's work was meaningless unless the local churches Floris, we can do nothing unless we have strong national alliances. This is because, and let me, this is because we are not a top-down organization. We have no hierarchical leadership. WA is respected and treated as an important voice at the global level due to the cumulative voice and effectiveness of evangelical alliances around the world. Our vision is to unite evangelicals globally for global transformation. This is a collective effort. WA works because, works because we are all committed to active participation in a global network of evangelicals that produces unity and for gospel witness and discipleship. In our global organization, nearly everyone raises their own support or serves on volunteer basis. Nevertheless, the level of commitment of our global, regional, and national leaders is extraordinary. And I want to thank all of you, our you know, regional, global, as well as national leaders, for your generous and dedicated contributions, without which we could not exist, let alone thrive. WEA's role is to unite and empower evangelical globally, by giving identity, voice, and platform in every nation. And that vision drives us in everything that we do. So I would like to summarize how we are doing it and what we need to do better in the upcoming years. As you know, this is our first, so what we have done and what we need to do is what I want to share this morning. As you know, this is our first General Assembly in 11 years. When I was elected as Secretary General, that was, seven year, uh, that was five years ago, we had our governing council that has not been elected for seven years. And over the course of seven years, some commitments change and activities vary. So electing a new IC is very important in building our organizational strength. I am grateful for our IC. 
I'd like to call on Dr. Goodwill Sanna, our chairman, because our IC is providing us good governance, accountability, providing oversight, and giving us guides, wise guidance as staff. Dr. Goodwill, let's welcome him. Thank you, uh, uh, Bishop F. As leaders, you all know that an organization is as good as its leadership in governance. The WA has not always fared well in the past 11 years, but things have changed for the better, that is. And that is why we are here. As chair of the IC, I can confirm, and my colleagues here in the International Council can affirm that today the WA is a constitutionally compliant, functional and effective International Council whose members have impeccable character. We just spoke about character veritable reputations as Christians and leaders who have for years served the church and WA with devotion and sacrifice and whose performance is on record in the past 16 months and fully reported for in the GA package that you've all received. I think I can confirm that IC is working very well with the ESG. Thank you very much. And it is my great joy to also work with Dr. Goodwill Shana as our chair. We have also revised our bylaws so that uh, we have streamlined our organizational structure, membership categories, and upgraded the office of the Secretary General. We have created a triumvirate of three leaders, so now there are two people carrying out the task with Godfrey Yogaraja handling programs and ministries, and Ray Sotskowski handling operations. And uh, together we are stronger, more effective, and we can do better and more. And we have actually outlined a smooth leadership success, succession. I'd like to call on uh, John Langley, who has suggested about leadership succession, to also share his perspective. On behalf of the International Council, I want to thank you, the National Alliances, for facilitating the revision of the bylaws, which have allowed us to have this smooth transition. Bylaws, of course, evolve as the world evolves and the organization evolves. And the Spanish Alliance think that we can still improve our bylaws and they have got an amendment to be presented at the business session, which you will find in your pack. We are your servants. We are bottom up, not top down. And so it is for you, the national and regional alliances to tell us how we can best serve you, and this will be reflected to some extent in the bylaws when it comes to representation. Some of you, or all of you, are represented geographically. Some of you feel that you're perhaps in the wrong region. Maybe you'd like to have a linguistic uh, grouping together. Do tell us what you think and we will seek to facilitate your wishes so the WA can go forward into the next generation. Thank you, John. Our, our leadership team also includes the five directors of the different departments that we have created. All of our commissions, task forces, and initiatives to which we collectively call networks have been placed under these ministry departments for improved coordination. For all of our departments and networks, achieving, in, uh, achieving increased engagement with our regional and national alliances is a high priority. We communicate regularly with our seven regional general secretaries. We meet monthly by telephone, teleconference and update each other to and coordinate our work. And then to make our organization accessible and more responsive to the needs of our member alliances, we have decentralized our operations, creating six global hubs so that we can be closer to the regional and national alliances and be readily available throughout the entire world. We have enjoyed the hospitality of, our, of the different networks and our different members in our annual meetings of leaders in Korea, Germany, the United States, as well as in Kenya. We have also created a task force on development in order, in order to enable the WA to expand, its, to expand its efforts while remaining financially sustainable. We thank God for Brian Stiller, our, Brian, uh, our uh, global ambassador, 
who has agreed even on a short term to lead this financial development program that we have. To assist our belie uh, the believers around the world, especially in those countries where Christians are frequently under strain, we seek to establish and strengthen national alliances. We have formed two regional alliances in the Middle East North and North Africa, and one in Central Asia, along with 12, as you have listed here, these 12 national alliances. Now, since every national alliance is autonomous, each one needs to function in its own terms of governance, staff leadership, and addressing prominent issues. So the WA has responded, responded to those needs by offering training on public engagement, advocacy, the United Nations mechanism, leadership, as well as responding to persecution and uh, suffering. We have also launched the Global Institute of Leadership, which will offer peer mentoring on regional, uh, and regional coaches uh, by regional coaches and experienced leaders on national alliances, and we will also provide online resources. We believe that these new training and mentoring resources will bear get much fruit in the form of peer learning and replication of successful work. Advocacy for religious freedom is one of our most successful or important activities, rather. This advocacy is essential in our goal for enabling the gospel to be preached throughout the whole world. As a principle, we support religious freedom for all people, not just for Christians, and by so doing, we gain the respect of our partners uh, uh, in these efforts. We are one of the many voices of religious freedom, so we do not try to claim credit for any particular successes. We thank God for uh, what God has helped us to do in terms of promoting religious freedom. Um, for example, we have done uh, the, uh, the background work and preparation for the Global Christians Forum uh, um, Conference on Religious Persecution. We sponsor the International Day of Prayer uh, for the Persecuted Churches every November, uh, every November. Our Religious Liberty Commission does extensive research and analysis on respective countries, as well as we are on the board of Religious Liberty Partnership. The International Institute for Religious Freedom, which is part of our Department of Theological Concerns, has participated in about 40 government conferences on religious freedom and 20 discussions on national parliaments. They have done extensive participation uh, in United Nations conferences, the most recent of which is the uh, World Summit on Religious Violence and Religious Freedom six months ago. They have also opened an office in Brasilia. Now, our liaison office in Geneva is also something that we want to celebrate because they take up about 20 cases on an average a year for our national alliances. Based on careful research, they submit reports and appeals to the United Nations bodies as well as to the government uh, embassies on matters of religious freedom. Our Geneva, Geneva office bridge the role between the member alliances and the uh, global human rights institutions and governments. When Pastor Andrew Burnson was in prison in Turkey, we spoke directly to the uh, U.S. ambassador, to the Turkish ambassador to the United States regarding his case. Godfrey was with me in that conversation. And we believe, along with many others, our conversation helped release Pastor Help release the release, uh, help the release of Pastor Brunson. When Bulgaria proposed the legislation that would have curtailed the rights of the minorities, our national alliance in Bulgaria, Nick is here, and our global advocacy in Geneva team worked together to successfully get out the undesirable provisions from that, that legislation. When Kosovo was considering a similar bill, our National Alliance in Kosovo arranged for me to meet personally with the president of the country, and because of that engagement, that bill regarding the curtailment of freedom was not passed. When two Sudanese pastors and a Czech Republic national were imprisoned in Sudan for allegedly having espionage against their country, we called on the Sudanese government to grant them clemency, and the Czech Republic 
was national was released after 24 days and the other two were released three months after. We thank God for that. Our efforts for religious freedom in Algeria, where churches have recently been shut down by the government authorities, are ongoing. Some churches were reopened in 2018 after we encouraged the U.S. State Department to look into the situation. However, Algerian authorities have recently closed down six churches, and our member church alliance is appealing for support and prayers at this time. On the other hand, we just enjoyed a wonderful success this week when the Palestinian Authority granted full recognition to our evangelical alliance in Pakistan, Pakistan Palestine rather. They have been uh, seeking for this for the last 12 years, so we thank God that this week it was granted. When Pope Francis visited the United Arab Emirates last February for a conference on human fraternity, I was also there representing the World Evangelical Alliance. In my message to the host, I urged them to move towards religious tolerance. I reminded them that forced religious belief is no belief at all. Christians all over the world are suffering for their faith. I'm, it's gratifying to know that we play a significant role in standing up and encouraging our fellow believers. We thank God for our commissions and networks that are addressing particular uh, uh, issues. For example, our Peace and Reconciliation Network spearheaded advocacy for peacemaking in various countries. Our Mission Commission, they advanced the polycentric uh, concept of mission that is mission from everywhere to everywhere, not just from the West to the rest. Publish, they publish books, mobilize mission agencies, and organize consultations. Our Women's Commission held a global consultation that, considered, that connected female leaders from around the world. And our Youth Commission is bringing youth leaders together for meaningful collaboration. Our National Alliance from the Philippines, the Philippine Council of Evangelical Alliance um, uh, Council, uh, Churches, organized the first ever global youth, Jesus Global Youth Day with Generation Next. They gathered about 50,000 youth leaders from 50 countries with participation of about 80, 83,000 local sites around the world. The outcome of that is asking the churches to bring down the average size of memberships to 23 during the next decade. Our sustainability center in Bonn, located across the United Nations office or facilities there has organized several side events at the UN conferences and they actually they actually have become uh, the co-chair of a working group of the UN partnership on religion and sustainable development and this is actually a network of about 800, uh, 180 global organizations of all faith so we want to thank our uh, sustainability center they also serve our uh, our re uh, regional network in Europe. Our Department of Theological Concerns helped to launch the Society of Christian Scholars as well as develop the Reforma, a global basic training program that, will hip, ho that hopes to reach a million untrained pastors. Now, in relation to our interfaith and intrafaith work, this is some of our most exciting activity, though perhaps also where we, we are most often misunderstood. Why do I say it's exciting? Well, because the WA, as a voice for evangelical Christians globally, is recognized as among the most important religious organizations of the world. Now, some have expressed, understandably, the concerns that our evangelical um, message could be compromised as we build relations and as we work and as we collaborate with people of other faith. However, we have found that we can relate graciously with other groups while maintaining that our commitment to Jesus Christ is our calling card in every encounter. We have changed the designation of our Office of the Ecumenical Relations to Office of Interfaith and Interfaith Relations, and our International Council approved the, here the principles uh, that will guide our intrafaith and interfaith interactions. On our intrafaith side, we have established friendly ongoing relations with major confessions. That's why we have ad 
uh, ambassadors to the Vatican, to the Orthodox churches, as well as to the um, ecumenical patriarch of the Orthodox. We also meet frequently with the general secretaries of the different communions. We have also structured our relationship with the World Council of Churches and with the Vatican, and uh, we are able to work properly with them, collaborating on issues but never compromising on our principles and our beliefs. Our, we have also structured, or in terms of our intrafaith relationship, relating with other evangelical networks and friends, we have related with the Lausanne, Empower 21, Transform World, as well as World Pentecostal Fellowship, so that we can avoid duplication and enhance collaboration. We have also established, uh, I would say, ambitious dialogue program with Muslim leaders and other religious groups. Beyond this, we are also preparing a global dialogue with Jewish representatives and other groups. What we want to say is that in our pluralistic world, we relate with other groups. As we relate with them, we constantly keep in mind that as evangelicals, we boldly and graciously proclaim and demonstrate the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Now, we thank God for what he has done. But our work continues, uh, you know, but we still have a lot of significant challenges that remain, a lot of mountains to conquer. What are those? First, we need to strengthen our communication systems so that our networks and leaders all over the world will be aware of and can access available resources. We will share information and create networks where we can encourage, um, we would say, uh, and strength, where, we, where we can encourage and strengthen each other toward fulfilling the vision that God has given us. We need to share our success stories, our success stories more broadly, communicate our best practices, gather information, and facilitate cross-national sharing of ideas. We will use available technologies and increase our use of social media to tell our stories so that we can interact on important issues as well as strengthen our collective ministries. So we will also increase our capacity to raise funds. We are expanding our development efforts to connect with people who share our ministry passion both in the United States and around the world. Now, we are grateful for the many people who are engaged in the WA who have been able to raise your funds and to support your own ministry. Last night, I, encouraged, I asked all the people who are in our commissions and networks, they raised their own parts, and all of those leaders, global leaders, they are able to support the ministry. But we also want to continue on, and we want to embark on helping, equipping the leaders of our regional and national alliances to expand their own fundraising capacity. We are currently searching for skilled people who can mentor and train national alliance in, in raising such funds. We are not yet a fully global organization. While we have 131 alliances in different countries, or 131 countries and at various levels of maturity, there are about 62 countries where we have no alliances or representation. We will be aggressive and more focused in establishing new alliances as well as strengthening the current ones to maturity. We want to have a national alliance in every country of the world. Let me repeat that. We want to have a national alliance in every country of the world. Our main strategy would be to ask stronger alliances to adapt other countries in order to either mentor the sister alliances in those countries, or to help create or establish a, a, an alliance where there is none. And we will do this in partnership with respective regional alliances. So we want to have that global network so that we have alliances. Now, our alliances, of course, will retain their autonomy, but we want to assist them in their work so that they can do it with high quality. We have developed a self-assessment self, self, self tool 
that will help national alliances to examine their own performance and capacity. And working through our Global Institute of Leadership, we intend to help our national alliances apply, you know, apply this tool to improve in their areas of need. Externally, our relevance and impact are observed most importantly or strongly uh, on issues such as religious freedom, creation care, peacemaking, human trafficking, and refugee issues. We want to build on the gains that we have achieved in terms of our global advocacy. In particular, we want to amplify our evangelical voice on behalf of freedom of religion, especially in places where Christians are a minority. I believe that our most promising way to enhance our advocacy is by creating a culture of healthy and interdependent we would say relationship and partnership among our national and regional alliances, commissions, and networks. We want to have that interdependence and relationship together as a network of national alliances, regional alliances, and networks. We also want to strengthen our relationship with other faith groups, with other faith groups, as well as United Nations and other uh, voices. Finally, we must be constantly looking for new and effective ways to fulfill the Great Commission. That's why our focus here is international disciple making. In partnership with the International, International Evangelism Association and the Billy Graham Training Center, we have introduced disciple making ministry in 38 countries. In this General Assembly, we pursue a new vision and a new season for our movement. Our primary focus in this General Assembly is intentional, intergenerational, and holistic disciple-making. During this next decade, we want to accelerate high-quality disciple-making efforts that will usher in a global and spiritual renewal and awakening. Our passion is that through the discipleship movement that we are doing all over in the different national alliances and networks, we will have that inter, inten, intentional, intergenerational disciple making that will usher in, as I have said, that global spiritual renewal and awakening so that we see that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ forever. Together, let us advance the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Together, let us cry out. Let us cry out to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, as we have done our part in advancing His kingdom all over the world. Thank you very much, and God bless you.